Getting it real with Wong Chun Wai on the hottest topics, frank, engaging, and candid. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Dr. Masli Malik, the former PKR MP and Education Minister, may no longer be a member of Parliament, but he is still very much in the news. This time as an actor. Joining us is the man himself, Dr. Masli Malay. Hello, Malaysia and followers from around the world. Welcome to 2023. Happy New Year. And we are kicking off the year with an interview with Dr. Masli Malik. He may be out of politics. Maybe, no, sorry. He may be out of parliament, but he's still in and on his hot item in the news following his appearance. As a character playing the jail prime minister sounds familiar. I uh, in this a uh, very hot uh, TV series called Coup cool Data that's showing on Astro now, and also for some reason he has been mistaken as Chairman Mao Zedong, the late Chairman Mao Zedong. We will talk about it later. <laughs> Happy New Year, Doctor Masli. Welcome to the program. Hello, hi, well, hi everybody. Good morning and a Happy New Year. Great. Okay, we will dive into the uh, question. Okay, now, um, we have been really hot. Okay, I've been watching Cool Data episode six now. Was I it? Can't get <laughs> episode six Cool Data, the TV series that's showing in the Astro. Okay, mm -hmm. and you play a jail prime minister. When I first saw you walking into the prison, mm -hmm. I, I wasn't sure at that time. Okay, uh, whether it was you, and I told myself, "My God, this guy really looks like Doctor Marsley." Okay, <laughs> but I wasn't sure because your name had not appeared. But you really played very well. You played it really well. Now, um, how did they pick you up to play this role in the TV show Coup d'État? <laughs> Thank you for this interview. I mean, this is the very first interview that we conducted asking asking me about my role as a cameo actor. Uh, thank you, Wong. And, yeah. Okay. So, uh, initially, I was approached by uh, the the producer, Imran, Imran Sheikh. Okay. Uh, he came to me after watching my uh, short movie that was produced by uh, Lumo, what was it, Lumo Production, uh, that, that was directed by our uh, very famous professional wrestler, wrestler. Uh, Ayes Shaukat. So, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, it, it appeared uh, as a short movie, as a cameo again. So, Imran asked me whether I wanted to appear uh, in his uh, drama series. So, mm -hmm. I told him, I would like to learn new things. I, mean, I love learning new things. Um, and why not? I mean, uh, in a pro bono basis, because, you know, to attend... And acting classes, you need to pay thousands of ringgit. So when he's offering me a free of charge to be directly in a movie as a cameo, although as a cameo, but mm. I can learn a lot of things of that industry, of that, uh, you know, uh, setup. Yeah. So I I told him, okay, straight away. So mm. it was last year. It, it, it was not this year or it was not after I lost Semparanga. <laughs> Because people thought that, oh, now he's turned into an actor. No, he's not. I mean, he was when yeah. I was the MP of Zimbarangam and, you know, it was last year. So it was, uh, the, produce, the production was in 2022. The production, it started 2022. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, right. oh, was it early this year? I, I no, last call. year. This is 2023 already. <laughs> <laughs> oh, early last year. Yeah, early last year. 2022. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we're in 2023, yeah. So, <laughs> so I, I mean, the, 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 the major reason was I, I, would, I would love to learn new things. Yeah, I see. Okay. Now, the, the previous uh, movie you were talking about, uh, it's called Taro, right? That's based Taro. on the Korean uh, TV series called uh, The Squid Game. Squid Game, yeah. It was based on that. Okay, now, uh, coming back to Coup d'etat, so you had to attend an uh, acting class. Okay, I know that... Um, Politics, uh, acting comes natural to politicians, okay? <laughs> is it so? <laughs> yes, politicians have this certain skill to act, okay? So it's quite natural. But, but, but tell me about your acting class. How long was it? <laughs> it was a brief one. I mean, uh. I'm not sure whether politicians are a good actor. Maybe, but 
I'm still struggling <laughs> convincing myself again that I'm still a politician because previously I was struggling within convincing myself that I'm no longer an, acad an academic. <laughs> I've turned into a, po a politician. And after not being an MP anymore, I, I'm struggling to convince myself that I'm still a politician. <laughs> but anyway, talking about acting, I mean, these guys, when, when, when I never attended any acting classes mm. or whatever, and I never appeared in any drama theatre when I was in school okay. or when I was in the university. Oh, yeah, never, I never. Never? I never. Okay. <laughs> it was very unfortunate of my childhood life then. It was very boring anyway. So, uh, but then I I was convinced by Imran and the other actors, especially Vanida, who mm. keep teaching me on how to, okay. to live with the character that uh, you're acting. And I still remember they keep telling me, you're not Mazli Malik. <laughs> mm. In this, while we're shooting in front of the cameras, you're not Mazli Malik. Let's forget Mazli Malik. Now you're Jamal, the... the, the, the the ousted uh, prime minister, the 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 one that uh, that was known as a corrupted PM, and now being sent into the prison. You are Jamal. You are Jamal. You are, I mean, they keep telling me, and um, I I really thank them a lot because it was kind of intensive, brief, uh, let me say, uh, masterclass of acting <laughs> and learning from those talented and experienced actors <laughs> dr masri yeah he the uh, the producers keep on telling you that you're supposed to be jamal yeah the jail prime minister mm -hmm. but uh, of course we know that jamal banner does not does not exist okay <laughs> so did you have to convince yourself that i'm not playing najib raza the jail prime minister <laughs> unfortunately not at all uh, najib raza picture never came into my mind then oh. maybe because <laughs> We were not expecting that he will go into the prison then. <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, so, before the conviction. Yeah, I have to take other characters into my mind. For example, the the ousted, not ousted, the, you know, Die Hard 2. Are you, are you a big fan of the Die Hard movie? Yes, yes, yes. Hard series. You should remember in part two, in series two, uh, there was this general that was captured mm. and he was going to be extradited. Okay. Yeah. So... Uh, I was trying to imitate his uh, his his character and trying to, I mean, thinking like him that okay, mm. I was a general, I was very powerful. Now I'm going to be signed into jail, and you know one thing, uh, I kept trying to imagine. Uh, there's another character which is Saddam Hussein, oh, and and Gaddafi. You know they were they were mm. dictators. Yeah, they were yeah. very powerful, and yes, they were signed into prison. So. I was trying to convince myself after I received the the draft of this the the, the dialogue, you know the the the, the, the movie script sure. and the, the movie the drama series script, and uh, I still remember Imran was uh, telling me, said, "Imagine yourself as Saddam Hussein." <laughs> so I was trying to imagine, trying to 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 uh, assume and presume how he think at that moment. You know, he was. Yeah. Somebody was very big. He was somebody was very powerful, but and then being sent into prison and humiliated by mm. the officers, you know, trying, yeah, trying. Try, I mean, there, there was a good class. It was a good acting class, and it was a good moment that I've gone through. Uh, you know, yeah, that's it. In, in a very strange way, in a very strange way. So post production, uh, post general election. And of course, uh, 2022, and then that uh, the uh, conviction of uh, Najib Tun Razak. <laughs> and then I'm like watching this uh, TV series, okay? It's really spooky. It's really real, okay? And that you're playing this character and saying, telling this uh, Vanida, the female prime minister, Jangati uh, Kamsaya, you know, don't play around with me, okay? I'm going to finish you off, okay? And then I'm like, wow, this is really real. You're planning your political maneuvers from inside the prison. That really looks real. The only thing missing, of course, was... Uh, Social media control. <laughs> or else you know what, really real, okay. One thing about that, the, the script of the drama series, when, when Imran first sent it to me, mm. uh, I was like re reading a novel. You know, you know I, I, I myself is a novel writer. Mm. I, I authored oh, I uh, two fictions. And mm -hmm. I can try to imagine that in my mind. Trying to fictionize things and trying to visualize things and 
trying to put myself into that Jamal, the ousted prime minister, was sent into prison. You know, so I said, why don't you give a try? You know, mm. and suddenly, what whatever happened, and that movie yeah. or that drama series came into uh, Astro just after, yeah, just like you said, yeah. uh, Najib Tunrazak being sent into prison. You know, we have a lot yeah. of example of the real thing and the result of 2022 election and all mm. those kind of things. You know, I, I really thank uh, the producer for producing this movie. And mind you, actually, it was supposed to be aired in August. <laughs> I see. But, you know, it's Malaysia. Too near. Too near for comfort. Yeah. So that's why just after the election result, I think a week or less than a week, straight away, Astro at the drama series and voila, you're having it now. <laughs> mm. Okay, for followers and viewers who are watching this program, you have, if you're completely lost, if you do not know what uh, Dr. Masli and I are talking, we're talking about this uh, TV series called Coup d'etat. Uh, it's, it's based on this country called Mas Raya, okay? Not Malaysia, Mas Raya, okay? It's Everything is uh, fictional here. <laughs> yes, yes. Anything that's near to it is purely coincidental. So Mars Raya has got a uh, female prime minister, the first female prime minister. Of course, they speak in Malay, but of course, we're going to say they speak in Bahasa Mars Raya because, Bahasa, because Malaysia does not exist here, okay? So it's Bahasa Mars Raya. And uh, poor Masli, who is now in jail, Jamal, has, not has, <laughs> Jamal has been disposed by the uh, female uh, prime minister and then the coalition coalition government that has been formed comprised of uh, religious South Islamist government, okay? And that uh, this leader has been blackmailed into trying to topple the female prime minister, but he was uh, caught in a setup with a Caucasian looking woman, Hagi Hagging, okay? And then you have a female finance minister. She thinks that she's still in the opposition and still taking part in progress in the opposition. So you really must watch this coup d'etat. It's really, really good. Very, I think it's, it's a cutting edge TV series for Malaysia. And I'm really glad that there's something that's so realistic and yet, so fictional is showing on, on our TV. Kudos to the producers and the people behind this TV series. Now, um, how has been the response of your friends, oh. family members, uh, party members to your cameo acting role? I mean, they were shocked. Honestly, they were shocked. Okay. <laughs> they were... <laughs> I mean, just like yourself, you were shocked. Oh, uh, what this Masli is doing? <laughs> yeah, betul ke ni? Adi? <laughs> betul ke ni? And he was bald and you know, looking at his face. Yeah. You know, normally we see... The, the typical uh, Mazli Malik is, I know, the smiling faces yeah. everywhere. And now he looked very serious, very spooky kind of uh, expression. And he's the ousted and imprisoned prime minister. <laughs> so I keep telling people, hey, that's Jamal. That's not Mazli either. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the, the Dr. Mazli, I know he's a small size guy. This guy is singly is talky, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Thanks to the videographer. They know how to... <laughs> How to do it? <laughs> no, um, you were the MP for um, uh, the Simparung Gam. Yeah. Um, have you ever visited the uh your constituents in Simparung Gam, the prison? Oh uh, yes, many times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Especially during uh Ramadan before Hari Raya. I see. So, uh, uh, new, new year. Uh, uh, during New Year to give uh, some. Uh, Charity for the the school children, mm. and mm. I mean I've visited more than ten times. <laughs> mm. Every I mean at least the list is uh, five times mm. every year, mm. annually. Okay. And I still remember so did... I did visit them for some maintenance that we were asking the okay. home ministers to do, especially their quarters. And mm. we I did bring the MCMC uh, of Johor and mm. telco providers. Um, mm -hmm. and the telco companies to come mm. into the prison because uh, okay. most of the staff are complaining okay. about uh, their children not having an adequate uh, internet mm. coverage for their mm. uh, online learning. So then it was during the lockup that I went there mm. a couple of times just to make sure that the children of the staff and mm. officers are having adequate uh, internet uh, coverage for them to continue mm. with their online classes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. So, uh, do prisoners? Okay. Uh, do prisoners? Do they have the right uh, to vote? Uh, in a general election. Thus far, no. Oh no. No. I, I'm. I'm not sure about if there oh, yeah. are. I mean, categories mm. of uh, prisoners, but mm. 
Mm. I, I never see sure. that. I mean, most of those who are mm -hmm. casting their votes, whether mm. Mm. postal vote or whatever, they mm. are the officers and the staff. But uh, that's one thing. I should share with you one thing, uh, yeah. Mr. Wong, that yeah. uh, I had the experience interviewing or doing mm. rehab for the prisoners around 2014 to 2016 when mm. uh, the pres uh, penjara sungabulo the prison sungabulo invited me to do mm. some rehab session and counseling session for the ICS mm. detainees i see okay okay yeah. all right it's so, interesting interesting and mm. so uh during that two years uh, counseling or rehab sessions i keep mm. bumping into our tense prime minister our current prime minister he was always inside the library so when oh, okay. i was right. doing the counseling session I finished the yeah. session, I came out, and then he came out from the library. So okay. it has been our, let's mm. say, a, a fortnight uh, official meeting. <laughs> just <laughs> after the, the counseling sessions, just after the rehab session. So I have another session talking to him, keep him updated with mm. whatever happening outside the prison. Outside. And apparently, mm. he, he, he was, up, I mean, he was kept updated more advanced than myself then. <laughs> I, I had my experience okay visiting uh Kajang prison as a I was invited uh, to give a motivation motivation talk to the prisoners. I don't know whether I managed to motivate them. Okay? <laughs> you do, you do. I should remember. <laughs> yeah. Well, I should remember when I was I mean then uh mm. then I was talking to to our prime minister our current prime minister Dr. Suyano Ibrahim when mm. he was asking me what I'm doing. Is it you know, I'm doing things that, uh, you know, I, I was denied of promotion then because of my, mm. you know, uh, activism and I was so yeah. vocal as an academic mm. then. So I was denied promotion. I was denied a lot of things. But mm. uh, I said, I mean, I told him that, but I'm enjoying myself by doing this kind of thing. So I think giving some uh, cherished moment or at least some meanings mm. uh, to the life of those uh uh, detainees, maybe mm. it could bring something to me as well. So yes. I still remember what he said. Uh, well, he said, he said that you know, coming from outside visiting us for being in prison is everything for us. Mm. I, I I never knew that. I I, yes. I cannot <laughs> I cannot uh, explain that because uh, mm. we never experienced that. But he yes. says he said as an inmate himself he said that. Having somebody from outside, you know, meeting them yeah. uh, inside the prison is a lot. It means a lot to their life. So, sure, sure. so I asked him, did my counseling session uh, having any impact? So he said when he was talking to the, uh, the detainees, he said mm. that it means a lot. Although, I mean, those detainees disagreed mm. with me in many things. Because they have sure. their own ideology, and I came there to convince them. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you know, especially for most of them, I mean, they, they assume or they presume that oh, this Muslim is a is a liberal kind of liberal yeah. li religious person that trying sure. to convince us otherwise. So, but again, uh, he said for them, uh, for the detainees, it means a lot. You know, they sure. keep waiting. Yeah. They, they they keep <laughs> waiting uh, for for my. Sure. Session. Uh, I see. <laughs> so did uh, Saudara Anwar recruit you into politics inside the jail? No, he has been uh, uh, invite. He has been inviting me to politics since 2012. Uh, just after uh, 2011, just after I came mm -hmm. back from uh, the UK. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so he himself, his daughter, and mm -hmm. few others, his uh, uh, ex son in law. Mm -hmm. They keep coming mm. to me and trying to mm. convince me, trying to seduce me <laughs> to join <laughs> politics. And I still mm. remember uh, amongst those people who uh, never give up trying to bring me into PKR then, it was uh, mm. Zuraida and Rafizi. Politics <laughs> well, is strange. <laughs> they, they, they were together in the same group with Azmin then. I was talking about okay. 2013, mm. maybe. Mm -hmm. And then things, you know, politics is, is very dynamic and it's very strange. Yeah. Before yeah. I joined politics, I never knew that politics is very interesting and very uh, ironic. <laughs> you, yeah. keep, you keep 
uh, bumping into a lot of ironic things and a lot of yeah. uh, oxymorons. <laughs> <laughs> things you do. I mean, moment. <laughs> yeah. In the case of Malaysia, I mean, the script is so unbelievable. Oh, there's a lot of plot twists. <laughs> there's a lot of plot twists everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so now that um, I mean, you lost in the uh, GE uh, prep team. Yeah. Um, um, have you continued to uh, to be part of the uh, PKR uh, uh, activities in uh, Simparangam? Yes, yes. I- I'm still the Ketua Cabang or the branch uh, okay. chief of uh, mm. Kadilan Simparangam and also uh, the mm. Pakatan Rapan of Simparangam. And mm. I'm also the Naib uh, Pengurusi of uh, uh, Johor uh, PKR. Mm. Uh, Mm-hmm. Uh, Joe PKR, and mm-hmm. you know I still have friends and families there yeah. in Sampang Renga. So, yeah. you, for example, yesterday I, update, I updated on my social media of my visit to one of mm-hmm. our dearest, uh, I don't want to say supporter, I would say family mm-hmm. member, uh, okay. Anjoli. I mean, she has been who has been uh, very actively involved with uh, with uh, political activities, especially with Kadilan. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. she dedicated the whole family to I mean, to bring the change. And just after the election, she was admitted into hospital mm-hmm. oh. due to her health condition. So yesterday, I visited her and few others from Simpang Ranganda. I keep visiting them and you know sure. and replying to their invitations, especially their penduri kawin. <laughs> so this would be con- Simpang Ranga would continue to be your constituency. Even though you're not the MP anymore, I don't want to say it's it's it's, it's constituency at the moment because mm. it's more of my kampung. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because it's no longer my constituency. I'm not. I'm no longer the sure. MP. So yeah. rather than looking at it as a constituency mm. of mine, I better look at it as my kampung. So it has more okay. sentimental values. I mean, I thank them mm. for giving me an opportunity to serve them for five years. You know, politics okay. is politics. Voting is. Mm. I mean. It's, it's, it's nothing but personal relation. I think I evaluate and I value, sorry, I value it more than mm. politics. You've given your uh, experiences, uh, you have been a scholar for a long time, academic for a long time, uh, you were the education uh, minister. Um, have you been invited to be uh, an advisor or to uh, support or to play any kind of uh, informal role, formal or informal in the new government? Uh no, 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 not at the, not at the moment. Okay. Sorry, no, not there, there. was no invitation at the moment. There was none, sure. and I'm still a jobless former MP and former Minister of Education. <laughs> what do you miss most? What do you miss most? Okay, I mean, you're a former minister and you're an MP. What do you miss most? Okay, that, that uh, you're no longer an elected uh, representative. Okay, as as a minister, sorry, not as a minister. Yeah. I mean, what I miss most as a minister is trying to get things done as soon as possible and trying to mm-hmm. improve the situation uh, of our education. So, mm-hmm. you know, if you ask me, what I miss most is trying to implement the new education model that we have prepared yeah. that's supposed to be uh, endorsed by the government in 2020 and supposed to has its mm-hmm. first kick starting at. Uh, uh, in in 2021, but mm-hmm. it has been a history. I'm not sure whether the current government uh, is equally interested to implement it. But from what we heard uh, mm. two nights ago from the mm-hmm. current uh, minister of education, uh, she will not implement any new things which uh, with regard the, yeah. the 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 policies of education. She will continue uh, okay. whatever policies that have been made. Uh, earlier by the former uh, by the uh, former government sure. so i mm-hmm. that's what i miss most you know i want the best for sure. uh, our children i want the best for our country and the best for our people because i trust we deserve much better than what we are now you know mm-hmm. if we try to compare ourselves with singapore our neighbor now we have been left far behind them in terms of education and we know the formula how to undo them and how to go at least at par with them. It's not more than them. And mm-hmm. this is where new education model has been prepared yeah. by a group of uh, experts, group of professionals, scientists, uh, educationists. And as a result of their engagement with more than 16,000 uh, uh, let me say, syndicates and uh, experts, uh, but 
I mean, it's a loss. Maybe one day, I, I never lose hope that maybe mm. one day that would be crystallized and we would be having a better education for Malaysians, regardless Your of their blue. ethnicities, regardless of their background, regardless of the, where they're coming from. Yeah. You you had this blueprint, this uh, model, and he had gone through cabinet and everything. No, um, he has not been through, nutshell, gone through cabinet. In a nutshell, uh, had it been implemented in a nutshell, what would we have seen? Come again? Uh, you know, he, he had gone through cabinet and everything. No, no, uh, he has not. It, oh, he, has, he had not reached the cabinet level yet. Yeah, it's supposed to be tabled to the cabinet in 2020. But after mm. Ton Mahathir took over from me, uh, mm. he was very busy as a prime minister. So he has no time to look uh, thoroughly okay. into the Minister of Education. But he wanted mm. it. Um, then... Uh, two months after that, uh, Sharatan moved and somebody mm. else took over. And this guy okay. has no clue mm. about education and he abandoned everything and put that inside the trash bin. So the new education model never been brought to the cabinet, never been endorsed and never been okay. implemented. Should has been should It has been implemented, but the year 2023, you would see a totally different Malaysia. What was it that you had in mind? Had it been implemented, okay. What would we have seen? Okay, the compulsory twelve years education, mm -hmm. you know, from from the preschooling until uh, the fifth uh, high grade, and you know, bringing STEM education as the mainstream and and the core okay. business of the whole education, modular mm -hmm. based education is no longer, uh, I mean, based on term and whoever okay. uh, get a good result go here and that. No, mm -hmm. you want it to be a, a, a modular based education thematic syllabus instead of you know uh class based uh, not class based uh, instead of year based syllabus year one year two year syllabus no we're going to have a thematic uh, kind of approach we're going to bring tvet into uh, the yeah. mainstream and we're going to introduce that as early as form 1 and mm -hmm. trying to, uh, we also wanted to implement uh, what we call as uh, uh, apprenticeship, uh, apprenticeship approach, just like what we we have it, not we have, just like what uh, Australia is having at the high school. Mm -hmm. You know, our high school mm -hmm. students need to spend sure. some mm -hmm. hours in a working uh, place in order to gain experience. In which, after they accumulated the hours, the, it will be recorded as part of their achievement, and we're going to implement the 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 big data based education we're going to fully utilize the artificial intelligence in order to assist parents and children to choose their study path after they're leaving okay. uh the high school and also you know we have this kind of uh, radical reform for our higher education in order to bring or uh, to uplift the level of our academicians and also the reputation okay of our academic institutions. Yeah. But you, know, you can Dr. find Masli, that, that in, yeah. in my two books. Uh, yeah. CPR from Malaysia Education. I speak in brief about it, not in details. And number two, Reformasi University. That was in uh, that is in Bahasa. The first one was in okay. English. Yeah. You know, Dr. Masli, that um, when you took on the role as education minister, you know that uh, uh, education in uh, Malaysia is so uh, uh, politicized, okay? It's so messy, okay? Evilly. I mean, it, it's Evilly really crazy, politicized. okay? Yeah. So we have a uh, scholar kebangsaan schools now are uh, perceived to be very religious. Uh, then we have the vernacular Chinese schools. And then we have now, apart from that, we also have a lot of uh, middle-class families who send their kids to uh, international school or private school. And many of them actually are not very good in Basa Malaysia, mm -hmm. okay? They can't speak Basa Malaysia well. Uh, and that's, it, it really becomes a, a really a bit crazy in a way, okay? Now, um... And of course, in university, we have where graduates uh, have qualifications that's a mismatch uh, to what they have studied in the working space. Um, I mean, this is kind of thing that the, where do we even actually start and how long would it actually can be fixed, okay, at all? Yeah. It can be fixed through the mm -hmm. new education model. Mm -hmm. And we, we tried it. And you're talking about the mismatch issue with, uh, you know, yeah. as a result of that, we're having a lot of unemployed graduates and 2021 alone, we were having nearly 25% of unemployed graduates. Sure. You know, it's, yeah. it's very, it's rather funny. I have to mm. say this clearly that, you know, we are talking about the racial inequality, inequality when it comes to higher learning institutions that have yeah. been funded by the government. 
uh, you, you, everybody knows what I mean. I mean, yeah. Uh, but what is the, you know, that was the result of the '90s policy of helping uh, the majority mm. race in order to study in the higher learning institution. But now we're living in 2023. Mm. We're living in a new millennia with a lot of gig economies, with a lot of IR 4.0 changes in our life. And what is the point of having 25% of unemployed graduates? If you wanted to help certain race to uplift their economic status by having them in the higher learning institution, but you ended up producing or you, you ended up having them as unemployed graduates, that yeah. will defeat the purpose. So we need a new formula. We need to change the 90s approach to our education. Our problem mm -hmm. is we are still living with the approach of the 90s when it comes to education and also to higher education. So this is where the new education model, trying to address that and trying to undo that and trying to bring a new approach to the new reality. Yeah. <laughs> And then we have uh, we have produced so many doctors uh, who cannot uh, get the any slot in the hospitals to perform any kind of uh, housemanship. Uh, again, we have lost. Uh, True, because recent reports, we don't we have lost them in Singapore. We we, yeah. we don't need that much doctors, you know. Yeah. You know, mm. this is where I think I still remember in one of the interviews conducted by BKK YouTube channel. This is a Mandarin YouTube channel. Yeah. I, I don't know why they invited me. That it was a very <laughs> fascinating one, and I started uh, accumulating a lot of. Yeah, and your Mandarin speaking uh, fans on on my social media platforms just after that, <laughs> just that uh, after that interview. So they did ask me on how to address this mm. mismatch. I think mm. th this is where we need a visionary prime minister, and you know, an excellent and visionary economic planning minister who understand and working together the prime minister to prepare a long term plan of our country. I mean, yes. 10 years ahead, 20 years ahead, 30 years ahead. And by then, we know which industries that need the most graduates in the mm. next 10, 20 or 30 years. So from there, we map into our education plan for the yeah. 10, 20, 30 years. We cannot, you know, we cannot work in silos. This is a problem with the previous sure. governments. Mm. Everybody works in silo. You know, all ministry works in silo. As a result, you have a very strange vision for the country that is not being uh, taken up by the different ministries. You know, <laughs> you know. For example, in the next ten years, in our career world, in our industry, what do we what what do we need most? I don't think we need much doctors anymore, medical doctors. Mm, yeah. We don't need much, uh, for example, lawyers anymore. We might need data analysts. We might need and a lot of uh, nanotechnologies. Uh, we might need a lot of, uh, you know, teaching assistants. But that's our education plan. That's our education map hmm. being mapped along that uh, vision or along that, uh, let me say, requirement or demands. I, I don't see hmm. that happening. So this hmm. is where we need to use AI to predict what are the job opportunities uh, that will be available in the net 10, 15, 20, 30 years ahead. We need that uh, deep analytics to help us to, uh, to, to formulate a new formula for education, not only at the foundation level, at the schooling level, but also at the higher education level. So this is where I, I trust. I believe that we need to bring TVET education into the mainstream and not to be seen and not to be uh, looked as a second class education uh, uh, career or whatever. I still remember the other day I was talking to Tansri Halim, uh, mm. uh, Halim Mazmin. I mean, the, he's a taiko when it comes to maritime and shipping. Mm. So he was telling me that anybody who graduated from his university, he has maritime university, uh, mm who would become a captain mm. after graduation straight away he or she will earn 15,000 ringgit mm. and if they are lucky enough they've been employed by international shipping company whatever they could okay. earn as much as 30,000 ringgit 
at the beginning salary. So oh. it's just DVAT. You know, okay. <laughs> but you know, the 90s policy was they keep pushing everybody uh, to, to learn academics, everybody yes. uh, to the university, learning some courses that are not related at all with our current situation. Uh, mm. The other day, you know, yesterday I was talking with some of my relatives in JB and they were talking about, you know, a lot of job opportunities that our Malaysian mm. can earn a lot, earn a very hefty uh, salary. But unfortunately, people are not going there. Like, you know, the undersea welders sounds very mm. strange, but yeah. I mean, those who are doing that job, they're earning a lot. And it, Absolutely. That, that's you don't need to go to university to spend right. four years. You need to spend yes. six months or a year, maybe training, and after yeah. that, you learn. Well, you you will earn, you know, yeah. 10, 10 k US dollar or maybe twenty k yeah. Singapore dollar for for that kind of job. Correct. A lot of the guy who come and fix your your the plumber who come and fix your leakages per visit is a one hundred to two hundred and for consultation. Okay, yes. you check whether you need any fixing. Okay? Yes, yes, yes. Diva is okay. is going to be the new. Uh, yeah. the new, I mean, the next big thing in, in our, uh, it's already the next big thing. <laughs> correct, correct. Dr. Masli, I want to end this with this question, okay? I mean that, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very soon, huh? <laughs> That's right, coming to 40 minutes. You're, oh, really? you're, from, I mean, you're from PKR and now for the first time in our nation's history, we have a party president from a multiracial party who has not become the prime minister. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, yet, but yet at the same time, uh, we have on the opposition bench, the 70 over MPs, uh, uh, from past and Bersat to almost 99% uh, Muslim Malays, except for one, one to two guys from Sabah. Now, um, is this healthy for Malaysia? Because that uh, you, you, you want uh, both sides, okay, to, uh, to be uh, really multiracial and that we can really see a true Malaysian reflection in terms of uh, electoral representative. And then, of course, after the election, uh, everybody got very spooky because on the other hand, we have around um 49 uh past mps what's your take on this <laughs> okay first and foremost you, you must know that this unity government unity government is the one that been proposed by the young deputy mm -hmm. by the king himself and also yeah. by the rulers council uh, Majir Raja Raja. and i think the aspiration that they have and especially our agong is to have a more stable government that can steer the country for the next five years, especially after the pandemic. You know, all over the world, we find developed countries and even developing countries are having a lot of radical structure reform when it comes to their economics, when it comes to their uh, governance, uh, just to make sure that they will not be left behind after the pandemic, because the pandemic hit us very hard on our economics, on our education, on our life, on our health system. So we need a radical reform. But to have a radical reform at the moment, you need a strong government. If not strong, you need a stable government. So this is where I, I think, or I trust, or I strongly believe that our rulers and also our young people to Nagong is looking at the situation that everybody needs to unite. We need to start a new chapter. We need to, to start a new beginning for Malaysia. Uh, and this is where I would thank our uh, politicians, our pol political leaders from different parties who agreed to be in this unity government because they can understand the aspiration and they are willing to take up the challenge and trying to, to, to bring all Malaysians together to build back our country after the pandemic. So it's not only the prime minister that we should look at. We should look at the whole government uh, from the from the far right and, and, and the far left that come together willingly uh, to build back the country. And we should give uh, our full support for them. And we should I mean, be thankful to uh, the Prime Minister uh, Anwar Ibrahim, who, who agreed to, to, to forget a lot of, uh, you know, let me say, not only differences, but also enmity with Amno, who had been treated him uh, badly in the past, but for the sake of the nation, for the sake of the country, uh, is willing to work together, not only with them, but also for those from Sabah, Sarawak and other parties. So this is, I would say, this is a government of Malaysians, the true government of Malaysians. Coming back to your question, 
uh, I'm 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 deadly worried about it because I'm not worried about the the political political side of it because I I I trust you wouldn't see much uh, uh, substantive things that would be brought up by uh, the opposition in this coming days or coming years. But what I'm worried is about the polarization of our people uh, mm -hmm. as a result of the anticipated uh, politicization of uh, you know, racial issues, religious issues. Uh, I think it is, uh, uh, let me say, expected to happen. So this is where we really need our current government to be more stern. Uh, when it coming when it comes to uh, media now i'm i'm not asking for uh, for uh, for a, a lot of restriction to the media but when it comes to uh, racial relation and uh, mm. you know the harmony of yeah. the country and especially mm. uh, in rebuilding our country back after the pandemic some stern actions should be uh, some stern measurement should be taken by the government Maybe on the yeah. expense of, you know, some sure. a little bit of freedom, but you know, we we need that in order to avoid yeah. any unwanted uh, circumstances that we resulted by uh, issues uh, that will be played yeah. by the position uh, with regard race, religion, and uh, uh, harmony. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, especially in the area of social media where everything is uh, free for all. So everything goes, nobody's quite sure as to the limit and as to the legal implication of it. It's just forward sent. Yeah, okay? yeah, true, true, true. Now, Dr. Masli, um, what are your hopes for 2023 and what do you really hope to have for Malaysia? Uh, please have your last wrap up before we end this program. Yeah, I hope that I will have a bigger heart to love everybody uh, not less than last year and not much than next year. <laughs> and uh, I keep praying for God that God, that God will give me a more passion to love Malaysians, uh, regardless of their race, religion, ethnicity, background, and uh, economic class, for me to serve them in whichever position I'm in as a jobless person. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, Dr. Masli, for joining us in this wonderful program. It's been really a I good thank you. I thank you. And I thank very you. Well. <laughs> yeah, I think that when I grow up, I want to be an actor too. Perhaps not playing the role of a jail prime minister, okay, <laughs> but for some lesser role like uh, Tan Sri Nazir Raza, oh. who played a cameo role in One Cent Thief, which uh, I still can't remember what did he play actually. It was just five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, Malaysians, and all the best to you, Dr. Masli. Hope to see you in Sing Pan Rangam at the constituency. Thank you. <laughs> My kampong. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, bye.